Good afternoon. My name is Mike Carley, and I'm a partner solutions engineer here at StreamSets. Today, we're going to talk about StreamSets Control Hub for Microsoft Azure. Specifically, we're going to go into great detail about how to create and configure a virtual machine for Microsoft Azure. The use case for this particular offering on Azure Marketplace is really designed for tests and development. It's really not designed for uh, a production level offering. If you're interested in a production level offering, please get in touch with your account team or sign up for a trial account on StreamSets Cloud, which provides a hosted SaaS offering for StreamSets Control Hub. And it's important to remember who this product is for. This product is ultimately for a range of roles on an IT team. Systems administrators, data engineers, operations personnel, pipeline developers, all can leverage StreamSets Control Hub. With that being said, let's go ahead and start the setup process. StreamSets provides a variety of plans and pricing in addition to the blogs and tutorials and other documentation that you might need to build out your data operations platform. Let's go ahead and set up our control instance. I'll go over here and click on Get It Now. I'll hit Continue. Here, we'll start with a preset configuration. StreamSets again provides you the ability to set between dev, general, and production or mission critical setups. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and use the general purpose D series line of compute shapes. We'll go ahead and create the VM. I'll go ahead and provide some very basic configuration information like my resource group. And again, because my name is Mike Carley, I'm going to go ahead and use the Mike resource group. I'll go ahead and name it Mike SCH test for my name. Because I'm in the US East region, I'll go ahead and select the region for US to East, set it for one. And the username will be SCH. And we'll go ahead and put in a password real quick. Again, all pretty standard configuration options. And again, you have more options to go ahead and configure, configure the disks, the networking, and a whole host of other factors. It'll run the final validations. Now that the final validations have passed, we'll go ahead and create the, uh, the uh, virtual machine. Now, while the virtual machine is being created, it's going to take about five to ten minutes for that resource to go ahead and be deployed. Once it's ready, you can go ahead and copy and paste that IP address. So what we'll do is we'll copy and paste the public IP address here. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and enter in the port number to access our control hub instance, which is 18631. Now what you'll find is there's going to be a network error. Now the network error is because we need to go ahead and provide some additional configuration options to our local host here that's trying to access the instance based in the Azure uh, data center. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and stop this request and we'll go ahead and make an addition to our local Etsy host file. So again, I'll copy and paste this address. I'll go ahead and type in uh, sudo nano or nano for slash Etsy slash hosts. And I'll go ahead and I'll go make an addition to our Etsy host file. Now what I'm going to add specifically is I'm going to add in the IP address for our Control Hub virtual machine. And then I'll go ahead and add in the name SCH-trial. Now it's very important that you enter in SCH-trial. What this will allow you to do from your local instance now that you change your Etsy host files is you'll be able to reach out to the Azure uh, virtual machine containing the control of instance, and you'll be able to go ahead and access your data operations platform. So we'll go ahead and we'll close this out. Say, yes, we want to save it. Keep it as the same name. And we'll go ahead and we'll send the same request all over again. So we'll go ahead and we'll put it in the IP address. Type in 18631. And there you go. Now we have access to our Azure Control Hub instance. We'll enter in the default username and password, which is admin at the organization admin. Go ahead and click continue. And then we'll go ahead and enter in the password for admin at, at admin, which is actually going to be the same thing, which is going to be admin at admin again.
So go ahead and copy that page, copy and paste that, and then we'll click sign in. And there we go. We're now logged into our Control Hub instance, running in a Microsoft Azure data center. So this particular Control Hub instance comes configured with some additional pipelines, some additional organizations. And what we recommend is that you go ahead and read some of our tutorials, some of our blogs, some of our um, uh, documentation that I mentioned earlier. So that way you can go ahead and, and take advantage of all the various configuration options uh, that your organization might find value in. Now that we've covered how to create and configure the virtual machine, let's go into some of the best practices of how to finish the Control Hub deployment and prepare it for organizational level use. Here, because I logged in as admin at admin, uh, what I'm going to do as part of the best practices is actually create another admin user. So what I'll do is I'll go here to administration, I'll go to users, and I'll actually create another user. So I'll create uh, Mike at admin. I'll go ahead and put in this. Do Mike at streamsets.com. And what I'm really doing here as part of the backup, uh, the best practices here, is I'm actually creating a backup admin user. So that way, in case anything goes wrong with the root admin that's provided during the course of the install process, I have a backup user that I can go ahead and, uh, and access to. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and hit save. And what will happen is it will create the user, and the username and password, the temporary password that I'm going to use to log in, won't be sent out. Uh, and it's important to know this because as part of the, the image that we provide you with, we have not configured an SMTP resource for you to send out the email with the temporary password for login. So what I'm going to do is since I've covered this, this part of the best practices, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change from the administration org to the sample organization that we've provided here. So what I'll do is I'll log out as the system administrator and I'll sign in as the admin at my sample org, my sample org at admin. I'll hit continue. I'll enter in the password. And here you can see the sample organization. And here you can see the user, which is admin at my sample org. Now, here because we're, lo we're logged into another organization, it doesn't uh, come with the pre configured pipelines as in with the admin organization. So, what I'll do is I'll show you briefly how to create a sample, uh, create a sample pipeline. So, here we'll enter in the pipeline name, put in SCH test pipeline, put in a description, we'll call it version one. And here you can see you can designate the pipeline type. So here we'll use a standard data collector based pipeline, but you can also create a data collector edge pipeline for any IoT use cases or create a microservices pipeline. So here we have Streamset's pipeline design canvas. This is the graphical user interface where you can design, test, and iterate your pipelines within your organization. StreamSets has provided a host of pre-made connectors. In this case here, you see a list of the origins that we have uh, ready to go out of the box. For simplicity's sake, we'll go ahead and make a really simple pipeline. Here, we'll leverage the random record generator as, as our origin, and then we'll go ahead and create a trash destination. So what'll happen in this pipeline is random records will go ahead and be generated and then they'll go ahead and be deleted. And this is a very simple pipeline. We'll go ahead and make sure that the error records are set to discard. So that way any error records are not saved on the instance. And we'll go ahead and preview the, the pipeline. So we'll go ahead and hit run preview. And here you can see we've made our first pipeline. We can see that the random record uh, generator is actually creating records listed here. And what we're going to do is we're going to actually go ahead and delete those records in the trash. Now, what we've just done is create our first pipeline within our first sample organization. Going forward, we have a host of resources available for you, not just covering the best practices of, as I've talked about today in this video, but we have a whole host of resources. We have great blogs and great videos that we'll include in this video and in other and in the Azure Marketplace listing so that way you can speed your time to development 
and really fully and fully engage with your data ops platform. Thank you very much. Have a good day.